Welcome to Trinity's online service. We're glad you could join us today. Grab your coffee or grab your tea and enjoy the service. Thank you, Maria, Sylvia, and Kathy for that welcome. I'm Pastor Bruce Todd, and I welcome you to Trinity's online worship service for this seventh weekend after Pentecost. I also invite you to listen on the radio at Great Songs of the Faith, 97.1 FM, where Trinity broadcasts our worship service every week at 11 o'clock on Sunday morning. We are now offering outdoor worship services on Sunday morning at 8.30 and 10 o'clock here at Trinity at 1000 West Main Street in Lansdale. We invite you to join us for Faith at Four, Monday through Friday, four o'clock in the afternoon, for an online devotional by one of the staff members or a member of the congregation on Trinity's Facebook page. You're welcome to join us for our Wednesday Bible studies, offered both Wednesday morning and Wednesday evening, led by seminarian Amy Smith. If you would like to join the Bible study, simply send an email to tlc at trinitylansdale.com or call the church office at 215-368-1710, leaving a voicemail that you would like to join the Bible study, and we will send you the link to do that. We are grateful for all of your support during this time, your prayers, and your financial giving. You may continue to support us financially by online giving on our website or by mailing your offerings to the church. We do have all our staff available during this time. If you are in need of any assistance by one of our staff members, we ask that you either email us on the emails found on the website or leave a message at the church office and we will return your message in a timely manner. As we begin our worship, we invite you to participate in the sections that are in bold print. Let us now begin with our confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, whose steadfast love is everlasting, whose faithfulness endures from generation to generation. Amen. Trusting in the mercy of God, let us confess our sin. Reconciling God, we confess that we do not trust your abundance, and we deny your presence in our lives. We place our hope in ourselves and rely on our own efforts. We fail to believe that you provide enough for all. We abuse your good creation for our own benefit. We fear difference and do not welcome others as you have welcomed us. We sin in thought, word, and deed. By your grace forgive us, through your love renew us, and in your spirit lead us so that we may live and serve you in newness of life. Amen. Beloved of God, by the radical abundance of divine mercy, we have peace with God through Christ Jesus, through whom we have obtained grace upon grace. Our sins are forgiven. Let us live now in hope, for hope does not disappoint because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us continue by singing our gathering hymn. For the fruit of all creation Oh, we are 
the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray together. Faithful God, most merciful judge, you care for your children with firmness and compassion. By your Spirit, nurture us who live in your kingdom, that we may be rooted in the way of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. We continue our worship with the reading. A reading from Isaiah, the 44th chapter. Thus says the Lord, the King of Israel, and his Redeemer, the Lord of hosts. I am the first, and I am the last. Besides me, there is no God. Who is like me? Let them proclaim it. Let them declare and set it forth before me. Who has announced from of old the things to come? Let them tell us what is yet to be. Do not fear or be afraid. Have I not told you from of old and declared it? You are my witnesses. Is there any God besides me? There is no other rock. I know not one. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. I invite you to listen to a telling of the gospel as found in the book of Matthew, the 13th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus put before them another parable. The kingdom of heaven may be compared to someone who sowed good seeds in his field. And while everyone was asleep, the enemy came and sowed weeds among the wheat, and then he went away. So when the plants came up and bore grain, the weeds appeared as well. And the servants of his household came to him and said, Master, did you not sow good seed? If then, where did these weeds come from? He answered, an enemy has done this. And the servants said to him, shall we go and gather the weeds? And he answered, no, because as you gather the weeds, you will uproot the wheat as well. Let them both grow together until the harvest time. And at the harvest time, I will call the reapers and tell them to gather first the weeds and put them in a bundle to be burned, and then to gather my wheat and put it in my barn. Then Jesus left the crowd and went into the house. But his disciples approached him and said, Lord, tell us the meaning of the field and the weeds. Jesus answered, the one who sowed the good wheat is the son of man. And the field is the world. And the good seed are the children of the kingdom. The weeds are the children of the evil one. And the enemy who sowed the weeds is the devil. The harvest is the, at the end of the age and the reapers are angels. Just as the weeds are collected and burned up in fire, so it will be at the end of the age. The son of man will send his angels and they will collect out of his kingdom all causes of sin and all evildoers and they will throw them into the furnace of fire and they'll be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Then the righteous will shine like the sun in the kingdom of their father. Let anyone who have its ears listen. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Hello, children. It's Pastor Diane. It's time for your children's message. And I am so excited to share with you today's message because... It includes one of my favorite hobbies, which is gardening. How many of you like to garden? Anybody? I can't see if you're raising your hand, sadly, but sometime we'll be together again real soon. And when you're home with mom or dad or grandpa or grandma, I bet you've been out in the garden with them. And today we're gonna look at these flowers and I wanted to see if you could tell me which one of all these flowers were weeds 
and which one was going to be wheat, weeds or which ones were going to be really good flowers or wheat, as Jesus would say. Now, I picked all these this morning from my gardens. And um, let's see, since you can't reach them from where you are, I will pull out something and see if you can tell me um, at home, what, is this a weed or is this a weed? Weed or weed? Flower or weed? Well, I think it's kind of both. That's confusing, isn't it? Sometimes weeds can become so popular that people actually like them. But let's try another one. I bet you can get this one. Can you see it? I'll hold it up. It's a daisy. A daisy's easy. That's a flower. So we'll put that down. Ooh, look at this big pink one. Isn't that gorgeous? Something so gorgeous must be a flower, isn't it? Huh? I think so. I think so. And it is. It's a hydrangea. And sometimes they're blue, a beautiful sky blue. Now, let's look at my other grouping here. Over here, I got a whole nother bunch. And let's see, I have something in here. They're starting to droop. Oh my, I have these. I don't even know what this is from myself. I picked so many things this morning. And that's what's kind of confusing. We've got beautiful plants here. Some are beautiful flowers that we want to keep. Some look a little weedy, but even some weeds, you know, like uh, milkweeds, are, we call them milkweed pods, and this is a milkweed, and they put out a big, you know, you've seen them where they, you can pull out the little seeds in there, white silk, and they can fly through the air, and those milkweeds can have a very good effect on people. So what Jesus wants us to see this morning is there's a parable, a story he told about a farmer who planted seeds and there was weeds and there was wheat. Wheat and tares, it's called in the Bible. But you couldn't exactly tell the difference when they were little. When the plants are just small and starting out, they all look the same. And they pull the, they pull the roots up. If you pull up the bad one, you pull up the good one. So Jesus says, let the weeds and the wheat, the wheat and the tares grow together until harvest time and then God will take care of it. God will choose who was to be thrown away and was the evil one and who was the good one to keep. So that's my lesson. We all have good in us and we all can be kind of naughty at times, right? And when we're naughty, we don't want to be locked up in our room forever. We want to say to mom, we can do better. We won't do it again. We won't do it again. And so we can be weedy, but we are also wheat. We are also a blessing to this world. And so God will give you lots of time to take his hand and walk with him and find a way to blossom until the harvest comes for us all. Okay, hope to see you out in your gardens, if not here soon. Bye-bye. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. Jesus was a carpenter, so they say, but he certainly knew a whole lot about farming, seeds, growing plants, and weeds. Midsummer now is a perfect time of year to ask how we feel about weeds, eh? Don't they thrive while we are away on vacation? And don't they thrive right where we don't want them? Flowers and grasses are getting brown all around now, and yet sometimes those weeds are just as green and jolly as ever. The dandelions, are they in your lawn? Or those sticky vines that get all over your rose bushes at the base and at the trunk of your arborvitae. I don't mind weeds. I can pull them out when they're shallow. The roots, whoosh, they come right out. And it's so satisfying to yank them out and get the whole root intact. But some invading weeds, some of them snap in the middle. And they return then just more robust than ever. 
just to give you the raspberries the next week. But oh, how about the power you feel grasping a bottle of Roundup? You know what Roundup is. That spray that kills all the weeds in your garden, cracks in your sidewalk, spray it down, let them go, die, shrivel, damn weeds. Well, weeds in the cracks are a little bit easier to cut out. But Jesus is giving us a warning today in his parable. A farmer sows wheat in his field, but overnight, while everyone is asleep, an enemy comes, it says, and sows weeds in the same soil. Jesus knew this unwanted weed was prevalent in his, all, in his day. It was called Darnell, Darnell. And it looked very much like the precious wheat sprouts when they were young and practically indistinguishable from the wheat. Plus, as they matured, the roots also became entwined underground. And so if you had mind pulling out the weed, you would uproot all the good crops too. Now you hear the real warning in Jesus' parable today, right? God is the judge, not us. There's a danger in assuming we know who is in and who is out in the kingdom. Jesus is inaugurating a new day. And in chapter 13 in Matthew's Gospel, this parable describes a hidden and mysterious nature in the kingdom of God. The sower in today's reading, you see, is meant to be the Messiah figure. And the field is the world. The wheat are those who believe in Jesus' message or the prophet's message. And they grow and grow in understanding. But the weeds are those who reject his gifts and think they know better. The question these parables ask us all is, what will we do with Jesus? Do we see and hear God's kingdom breaking into the world in unexpected ways, from unknown voices, especially in these times? And do we see Jesus' presence changing lives, or are we faking it? And in God's church, don't we compare ourselves with others and see a few weeds that we think we could really do without? In the baby church of that first century, often the weeds weren't some uneducated sort of yoke, country yokel. No, that was the confusing part. The weeds may have been those self-important Jewish leaders or the Greek philosophers who tried to trick Jesus and undermine his teachings and question his authority. They felt only they had the correct knowledge about God and needed no further insight from this quaint and dusty Galilean rabbi. But despite some problematic folks in our churches, Jesus encouraging us today to busy ourselves proclaiming the good news, the good news to the whole world, and make disciples and focus on the positive and crowd out the weeds Separate them? No. Wait till the end of time, says the parable. We aren't skilled enough to see inside of another person's heart, are we? We ourselves too often fall into sin and threaten the church's mission easily enough, don't you think? Okay, here's, here's this weed's confession. Yes, I think I deserved that sketchy title a few congregations back, you see. I had a woman there who loved to point out to me all the pastoral care that needed to be done. She would greet me daily at the church sidewalk going into the office each morning and list all those people that I uh, was supposed to be uh, aware of that were in the hospital or needing some visitation. It felt just a little judgmental, just a little competitive. She did this for years, so that when I was about to leave that church for a new call one morning, <laughs> I let her know just exactly how I felt. 
who, yep, I raised my voice plenty. It wasn't pretty, but it just felt so good. Oh, forgive me, Lord, it felt good. But immediately this weedy, thorny, prickly pastor was ashamed. And the worst was, it, she took it well. She took it well, seemed to respect me more for the reprimand, and forgave me on top of it. What? Now that's the weed that you'd like in your garden. And who was the wheat there anyway? You see, Jesus didn't enter this world as a finger-pointing judge. He came quietly, gently among us, and he lived in our shoes. Instead of closing the door in our face, when we messed up, he welcomed the wicked and the sinner and the outcast, even preferring their company. Why? Because they knew and admitted they needed help. They needed redemption. They needed forgiveness. And Jesus gladly pruned them into new creations and fertilized them with grace, and he turned weeds into wheat for his father's barn. Even when his own disciples flip-flopped from loyalty to betraying him, he still didn't judge them. He relied on them to grow his church, as he does rely on you and me. This was the week Trinity's youth were to be going to the Appalachia Service Project, doing their annual home repair. Many people are remembering it this week, the teenagers, the leaders that have gone for years and decades. I had hoped to accompany the team this year, and I was so looking forward to it, but sadly, it was canceled, of course, due to COVID-19 epidemic. But years ago, with another church, I was at the Appalachia Service Project, and there was a teenage boy there from another church who seemed so unusual. You might say a little weedy. Yes, weed, E-E-D-E. -E. He was always alone, carrying around a novel, The East of Eden, and he had to interact with nobody, not willingly. He was a gifted dramatic type, though, obviously intelligent. Let's call him Jake. Jake. And I did wonder, why did he come along on this trip? How did he relate to this project with a simple, poor family at the work site? Was he kind to them? Was he shy? Was he compassionate? Then I thought, was he superior for some reason? Was he autistic? Why was he so distant from everyone, making us feel invisible? Did he really belong to the Appalachia Service Project crowd? Some of us considered him scary, the type of kid that makes a bomb in the garage or takes a gun to school to do harm. Well, by the middle of the week, he'd met a girl from another church, and I watched his demeanor change at the picnic Thursday night. Like a lovesick puppy, he devotedly followed her and was totally attentive. And Friday, our last night, at evening gathering, where all the kids get together in a big circle of 60, 70, 80 of us, and we share our thoughts. We share God moments. They're called God moments. When we experience God or the Spirit touching us during the week with our family, our friends, people in the village and towns, there were about 83 of us sitting in a huge circle, and you might say we were weeds and wheat sitting together. And when Jake's turn came, much to my surprise, he spoke up. We were all shocked, he said, in a natural voice with no false airs put on or anymore. Jake said, this year I found it hard to trust people. I was hurt badly, and I just closed down. Then I battled deep depression for weeks, but this week I want to thank you all of you, for being really kind to me and allowing me to be along with you on Appalachia Service Project. It's been so good, and I feel I can open, open up again 
and I have hope. How humbling was it to hear this real heartfelt story from this boy, the truth. The truth is that what Jesus means to say here is let God, not us, be the judge of who will shine like the sun at harvest time. Because who knew Jake's aching need for patience and a community that would accept him? It was so crucial. What if we'd added still more judgment instead of showing him love at this time in his life? There but for the grace of God go all of us. Jake's story could be ours. So let's all remember this, even our potential enemies, as he would seem, can become a benefit to us if we see them in God's view. A wise man said, if we look directly at the human race, says John Calvin, unaided by God, we feel more hate than love. More hate than love. That is why we best leave the weeding or those wheat fields only in the hands of our merciful God, our gracious Savior. And now let anyone who has ears to hear, listen. And now, if you will please join in the singing of the hymn of the day.
Let us profess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven, he is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Confident of your care and helped by the Holy Spirit, we pray for the Church, the world, and all who are in need. God of the harvest, you sow the good seed of the gospel of Jesus Christ into your field. Help your Church throughout the world to be both diligent and patient, full of resolve and gentleness, that our witness may be faithful to your intentions. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of all space and time, your whole creation groans in labor pains, awaiting the gift of new birth. Renew the earth, sky, and sea, so that all your creation experiences freedom from the bondage of decay. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of the nations, teach us your ways, that we may walk in your truth. Mend the fabric of the human family, now torn apart by our fearful and warring ways. Guide us by your mercy, grace, and steadfast love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of hope, you accompany those who suffer and are near to the brokenhearted. Open our hearts to your children who are lonely and abandoned, who feel trapped by despair and all who suffer in any way, especially Wendy Erickson, Paul Pinther, Barbara Rogers, Sue Shepard, Leon Strohecker, Jerry Bolig, those listed here on our prayer list, and all those we name in our hearts either silently or aloud. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of the seasons, in the midst of summer, give us refreshment, renewal, and new opportunities. We pray for favorable weather. We pray for the safety of those who travel. We pray for those who cannot take the rest they need. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of life, those who have died in you shine like the sun in your endless kingdom. We remember with thanksgiving the saints of all times and places and saints close to us, especially Ethel Seidner, John Thomas, and Tom Sargent. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In the certain hope that nothing can separate us from your love, we offer these prayers to you through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us now continue with the offering.
let us pray. O God of justice and love, we give thanks to you that you illumine our way through life with the words of your Son. Give us the light we need, awaken us to the needs of others, and at the end bring all the world to your feast. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, to whom, with you and the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and hear us as we pray. bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.